Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly team meeting. We are the 24th of January 2023. Today, around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Mark Waite, Hervé Lemur, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verhartan, and Kevin Martins. The usual suspects. Um, announcements. The new weekly 2388 as list has been deployed in Docker and packages. I assume the rest of the checklist is okay. I haven't haven't checked the rest of the checklist because with ci.jenkins.io down, we can't merge the uh, we can't merge the documentation change. But I assume Kevin will will or has already updated to confirm the weekly chain log because okay, we just we need to wait for ci.jenkins.io to return before we finish that job. Okay. I actually just um, completed the draft of it, Mark. So that's already as a pull request draft. So yeah, good to go. Perfect. Nice, nice job, folks. Continuing the checklist. Uh, do you have other announcement? I don't. Okay, so let's get Let's check the calendar. So the next weekly, like every week, will happen next week. Will be which day will we be? Thirty one. Um, next LTS is the eighth of February. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It will be 2375.3. Um, next security release <laughs> today. <laughs> so that was announced yesterday on the uh, mailing list by Daniel. Uh, it's currently uh, being run. So the, the binaries have been deployed uh, one or two hours ago. Uh, CI Jenkins is currently down. I assume they have a checklist and until the checklist isn't finished, they won't bring CI Jenkins IO up. Uh, so we have to wait. No blockers that we can help them as far as I know. Next major event, next LTS Bane's line selection tomorrow. Thanks, Mark, for adding that note. Um, we have yes first them correct uh, first them in two weeks so if you want to discuss infrastructure jenkins or any related topic meet the members that should be here as myself Hervé, stefan and bruno any other calendar item oh, okay let's get started with the task then um, the task that we finished, grant mark wait access to the new VPN Jenkins IO uh, system. So it works. Um, we created the new VPN only for the new private network. Now it's only for reaching infra.ci.jenkins.io. We've added manually members of the team, including Stefan, Hervé and I as a first wave, and then the second wave included Tim, uh, Alex, Mark, Gavin, uh, Daniel, and Vadek. I haven't checked with Daniel and Vadek as they, they are not going to infra CI often, but they were that made sense. Um, in the upcoming future, release.ci.jenkins.io will be migrated to that network area meaning people that should be, uh, let's say, release lead or that might require access to that controller will have to create a new request to, to access like the one that Mark created. Why don't we migrate everyone automatically? It's a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, every three year cleanup. Uh, we have a lot of users that have access to the current VPN that will be legacy uh, soon, I hope. So we try to track down and audit the person that really need access now. It's a kind of, if you don't need access, your access will be deleted in the future. And there is no problem on asking for an access if it's justified. 
So we don't bother people, but we don't have to uh, finally select, but still we don't keep people that are not using or are not participating on the project anymore. Uh, Mark, you confirm that it works, so I close the issue. Um, were you able to use the new certificate that you generated, which uh, end of life should be in one year? Not, or not yet. Less, or six so months. I'm still using the old certificate, but I'm highly motivated to switch from the old certificate to the new certificate since the old certificate yeah, expires weeks. in a week or two. The two or the third of February, as far as I remember. So you have yeah, two weeks. So, so I am I am motivated to to, <laughs> to get that certificate renewed. Any question on that topic? No. Okay. Just a reminder that new VPN does not require you to have a new certificate. You can reuse the same private certificates that only you have access to. The only uh, technical item that we have to do is adding a specific config per user that allocate a private IP in the virtual network for you, only for you. And we rebuild a new image and deploy it. And then you have access. But you keep the same authentication and same certificate as an user. It's easier for everyone. Hmm. Okay, I'll I'll have to think about the the words you said did not did not trigger all of the comprehension things that they probably <laughs> should have for me. So I'll have to think more about that. I may listen to the recording later and be sure I understand what you just said and then try it. Okay, Thanks. I can show you exactly what we change in in the Docker image of the VPN, and you will understand right away why it's it's a minor change. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, so next topic, Kubernetes management job stuck in executor queue. So last week, uh, we migrated InfraCI on the new network, on the new cluster. So that, that was quite the migration. And that kind of migration is never without road bumps because InfraCI manage itself. So it's an egg, egg and chicken issue. So we had to bootstrap from scratch. Of course, we always forget about things, especially since the previous clusters were done manually and it was the case for years and months, while the new cluster is fully as good thanks to the work of the team. Which means that, yeah, of course, we had some changes. <clears throat> One of the main changes is that the, uh, the amount of available IOPS for the data directory used by the Jenkins controller, which is IO bound, the number of IOPS was clearly lower than it was in the previous setup. Uh, we thought uh, by using the same setup, we were in the same result, but it, it appeared that we might have done manual things. The result was when trying to deploy again a new image, as we usually do for plugins or core updates, at least once a week, the time required for the whole system to deploy the new image, restart the controller, and the controller reconnect to the agent, that time was greater than the time out of the task itself. So it was immediately rolled back, and we were always having one and then two uh, restarts, leading to a lot of um, pipeline issue, because while trying to check what was the state of the pipeline, restoring the pipeline and retrying the pipeline or continuing them, it was suddenly stopped again by an external signal. So that was clearly corrupting the, the pipeline state XML file on the file system and creating a lot of IOPS. And the more it was retrying since last Friday, the more the amount of available IOPS was decreasing. We are allowed to have some burst in IOPS but just a certain amount. It's a kind of credit. The less you use, the more credit you gain and that you can use when you need a burst of IOPS. Uh, so we had to in increase the kind of the available system and we improved the available uh, IOPS by switching from standard to uh, premium SSD. It's a minor cost increase, but it's a cost increase. So now InfraCI is, uh, is, uh, is performing better. Um, we have still to watch carefully in the upcoming two weeks if we have some bursts, because maybe we will need to increase the QoS. You can increase the quality of the device and also the QoS 
meaning way more uh, IOPS, but it costs a bit more. So that's why we go step by step. And also we, as a team, we spent the whole day yesterday uh, adding another uh, other safety measures. Now the time out for Jenkins Infra itself, because it's a sensitive topic is greater. So we, we went from five to 10 minutes just to be sure that we can have a full rollback without cutting the process. Um, and we added a, a set of minor items. Um, we might benefit from upgrading the pipeline to use the retry in the future. But right now we stopped because we had other, uh, other pressing concerns. So it's stabilized, it hasn't been an issue and we will validate finally a second time with today's weekly because we'll generate a new Docker image. So later today or tomorrow, we might crash the controller again or not. I trust that it won't because Stefan and I tested it yesterday late. So that should be okay. So thanks Alex for opening that issue. I see that uh, Alex is uh, an early person <laughs> because he opened the issue way before I, I even woke up. So <laughs> any question on that topic? Okay, there has been a VPN access request for Adrien Le Charpentier. Uh, we haven't finished the task yet, another issue was open. The goal is for him is to be able to access the database used for plugin health scoring. Uh, VPN was the first step. It's not an easy task, so we are currently working on that, but at least he has access to the VPN access. That's the old VPN because the database is still on the old network. Uh, there has been an issue about Jenkins Artifactory not accessible. It was a user request, and in fact, uh, the user had an issue on their own. It was a babe gag. So yes, uh, they recovered their access and they confirm it's okay. So nothing more about this one. Same for someone who was blocked by the anti-spam system. Uh, so we never received the uh, answer from that person. So I created the account with the email they provided that should have received the email and closed the issue. No answer. So yeah, I guess they are using it. Otherwise that will be an empty account for nothing. And we archive the Jira components. Nothing to say about this one. Any question about the work we did? Okay. Now status, so just a reminder about the top priority following the meeting that Mark had with Gifrock last week. Yeah, sorry, I fell asleep on the couch. I'm really sorry, so I wasn't able to join. It was too late for me, <laughs> my bad. Um, but the outcome is that first we, we have now a metrics with the new Gifrock platform. And these metrics are uh, retrieved by Mark and they, we should have them weekly now. Uh, this metrics imply all the requests. So we have an evaluation of the outbound bandwidth and downloads per repository, per IP. Um, first things, Gfrog told us that blocking IPs, Mark, stop me if uh, it's wrong, but blocking IP might be counterproductive or at least ineffective because most of the pattern they see as soon as they block an IP, either globally or per repo, whatever, uh, people can use another public IP. And it's a uh, cat and mice game. So that's something we will, that will be ineffective for us. Which means we still need to work on enabling authentication on the non-normal uh, repository. Every mirror repositories should not be available for free uh, for anonymous users all across the world. That might not block all the outboard bandwidth, but at least we will have an account that we manage on the LDAP that we can block and contact. Um, so that's the top priority, uh, Gfrog decreasing, uh, in decreasing the outbound bandwidth there because Gfrog needs us to get under, um, yeah, to show that we make progress. Uh, the second topic is based on the data we received. It looks like that the, the amount of data downloaded from the Jenkins Infra is clearly greater than expected, which means the ACP project, Artifact Caching Proxy that Hervé worked on the past months, is clearly going back on top of the priority at the same level because 
that's something we can immediately tell GFrog, look, we have decreased because we saw a lot of our IPs. Um, that means with these two in parallel, we have a lot of uh, topics that are important here. Um, regarding the ACP, Stefan and I are current, so I'm currently sharing knowledge with Stefan to make it as autonomous as Hervé and I around the Maven settings XML and ACP topic. Our goal is to check if the current ACP instance in DigitalOcean is responding correctly. Uh, is it currently working? And we are going to try to start using it as the default one, even if it creates and short term a bit of cross cloud bandwidth cost for us, it will be clearly uh, important to show uh, figures to GFrog. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Stefan and I will also plan to work on uh, fixing the AWS one uh, ACP instance because we are only missing a certificate. So that should be easy to fix. And we would have two. So at least we will have AWS uh, data that consume a lot in AWS and Digital Ocean. Based on which one is working the best or both, we could even decide. That's a good tip that Mark shared with me uh, last week. We could change the amount of workload between AWS and Digital Ocean. We can control the amount of pods. Finally, Hervé is working, continue working on the new network and clusters because it's a work in progress. Um, the, the thing is, it's related to the ACP in Azure because with the IP overlap on the current public network, we need a brand's new set of networks. Private was done, public is get, got started. And we don't need to migrate everything immediately to get started with a new ACP in Azure. We only need a new cluster that Hervé is working on with the new ACP instance. So that's how we divided the work. Uh, that will be the pri top priority for us in the upcoming week. The rest uh, will be, let's say, day-to-day uh, -day work, but we should not try uh, more tasks. In that context, so first of all, Hervé, can I can you give us a status of private gates uh, migration? So the, the cluster itself. The cluster itself is running. AfraCI has been moved on this new cluster. What's remaining is uh, the migration of other services and uh, release.ci to Jenkins.io on it. But I think it will wait. Was the public ATS completion? Other services. Release CI at least. But blocked okay. by public. Not blocked by, but uh, deprioritized. Good point. Thanks. But deprioritized. In favor of public gates. In favor of or ACP in Azure. Um, so release.ci will be quite the topic in the sense that we we will need to create node pools that were that used to be on the public cluster in the new one. We need to Hervé already spend some time on being sure that we can run two Jenkins controller in FRACI and release CI in the same cluster with different agent for, uh, on different namespaces, just to be sure that you have good naming conventions and good isolation between all. That will require a bit of infrastructure work and also communication to the, to the release team. So team Yacom will drive the knowledge sharing here because we will have to communicate to them what are the requirements for the next weekly and the next LTS? Um, I'm not sure we will be able to do it before the upcoming LTS, but if we can, that will be a nice thing though. Depends on the ACP result that we will have in the upcoming days. Because I would prefer to run a LTS.3 version on a new setup instead of a brand new LTS for me feel safer because yeah, that's not the same amount of uh, moving pieces. Um, same status for the new public gates uh, cluster, Hervé, please. 
the cluster uh, has just been created. I'm working out the uh, little issue around the storage class uh, as uh, the Terraform job uh, doesn't seem to be able to connect to this new cluster, but it doesn't surprise me as I don't, I don't, uh, I, uh, I haven't uh, had the time to put uh, its credential in uh, the secrets, so I've uh, temporarily commented uh, this section out. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, work in progress, but uh, progressing all right. Cluster Okay. As soon Chat. as I've uh, ensure uh, every job and Afrasia can connect to this new cluster, I'll deploy uh, an uh, Nginx ingress on it and uh, the artifact caching proxy. And later, the other services, but you you will yeah, need Datadog, is... Cert Manager, and then ACP. The three of them are required: Cert Manager to automatically generate certificates, Datadog to collect metrics because we will need metrics and logs, and Ingress, of course, to provide access. Uh, just a note, thanks to the work that has been done by the team and, um, and by Hervé here. Um, that cluster supports, should support IPv6. That's a strong target. So right now, all the current production clusters, such as uh, services, such as the Mirror or Redirect or Get Jenkins IO, they do not support IPv6 from outside. In that case, we'll be able to provide an external public load balancer. So our Indian fellows will be able to access it before IPv4 is disabled everywhere in India. So we have Just issues about that. Just in time. It's been more than 10 years. It's been more yeah. than 10 years. More, more. <laughs> is there any question on both these uh, clusters? No, um, I got one question because that's in that topic. We have a stack that Olivier deployed and used uh, during months and years. We have a metric collection and log collection stacks, uh, metrics only, sorry, uh, built on with Prometheus and Grafana. All that stack is inside the current prod public uh, gates and is collecting metrics only of the cluster itself that was built when it was the only cluster. We haven't used that stack since one year at least, even for double checking, because we have Datadog now collecting everything successfully and we use Datadog. The reason of having Datadog and Grafana in parallel, as per Olivier's feedback uh, when I started with working with him on that topic, uh, was just in case Datadog uh, get rid of us. However, right now, the Prometheus deployment is absolutely broken. It doesn't work. We don't have metric collection anymore. And Grafana has been done regularly for, for days before uh, I realized. So that means no one is using it. So since that setup is using storage compute cycle and would have been migrated on one of the pr new private or public cluster, I got a proposal and I just want to validate with everyone here. And I also want to double check with Olivier one time, but I plan to propose deletion of this system. Delish, a clean, a soft deletion. It's still running on the current cluster. I won't delete it automatically, but we won't create new deployments on the new, uh, on the two new clusters. So when we will disallocate the resources of the current cluster, then that will gain us some money. Does it make sense for everyone there or is there any objection or attention point? No objection for me. That makes sense to shut it down. I was uh, planning to migrate them onto the new clusters and remove them in another pull request so it will be easy to revert if needed. Yeah, I, I vote for not migrating them personally, 
I don't say it's not useful. I just say we already have Datadog. And the day we will reinstall that whole stack, we will have to plan it to write down the reason why we did that. Because it has been deployed manually, then imported manually on Elm, just to be sure that it's inside Elm. But there has been so much breaking change on Prometheus and Grafana Elm charts that we are not able to keep up. So that's why. Um, is it okay? So, uh, Hervé, is it okay for you for not migrating them? Uh, and we'll see uh, Olivier's feedback during first them. No problem. Best work to do with this one again. publicates. Any question? No, okay. Um, issue add a VPN for public network. I propose to delay that one. Uh, the use case for such a VPN will be to allow people such as Atrian to access the Kubernetes services that are in the public network without granting them access to the infra CI release CI private network. That's a new use case and it's not, there is no emergent use case. So is it okay for you if we move this one back to the um, to the backlog. Yes, uh, for the record, I've opened a request about it, but yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be checked and reviewed now. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Not needed now, back to backlog part. Initial work done on a pair. Closed for now. Any question? Um, another task uh, that I propose to keep working on. Uh, on Trusted CI, we did some work along with Stefan. Uh, we created brand new multi brand jobs to, uh, to check for the tags and build and deploy the tags of our Docker agent images, free images. The goal was to avoid that um, uh, hold tag being rebuilt and deployed as the latest image, because each tag is deployed as the tag itself and as the latest, because we expect a tag to be built only once. Uh, while playing around, so uh, Stefan, do you want to explain the root cause that we found around Git polling? Are you okay or do you want me to explain? No, you are explaining way better than me. Um... Of course. That's cheating. Okay. So some of the whole tags uh, came from an age where multi branch pipeline wasn't used for that one. And they had keyword around Git polling. And once you started the Git polling, then regularly in a multi branch pipeline, the, the, the leaf job is only a pipeline job and is polling itself. You can do whatever settings you want at the multi-branch scanning level to say, don't rebuild this one. The polling keep existing inside the sub job as soon as the job exists. So that's why we went on creating brand new jobs to see if it was avoiding polling. Pro tip, we almost did that, except we still don't understand some of the job were triggered at least one time, starting again polling on the new jobs, but just a few. And we did a nice trick, we run a replay of these jobs exhaustively by only removing the polling keyword and doing nothing. The job are marked green and the polling disappeared. We also check that at the file system level by checking directly the XML file and now we don't see any polling anymore. I see that a little like a, a, cron, a cron job at the user level instead of the of the system level, so you don't see them, but they are, they are running on in your back at, at the at the user level, and in that case, they are working in in each pipeline in instead of the whole thing. So you, whatever you do on the on the multi branch, it's not hurting the one which is programmatically done by the the cron at the pipeline level. Am I right? That's correct. Yeah. So we haven't seen since last week any uh, parasite job. So now the next step will be for the upcoming seven days, 
the old job were disabled, we are, we are having the new ones. So we will have to carefully watch before closing that issue, um, the incoming uh, Docker image agents. So there should be new tags soon because we had the operating system updates on the free images. So we should be able to continue deploying images regularly. And if it works as expected, then the problem should be gone. So I'm keeping that one on the upcoming uh, milestone. Is there any question or objection on this one? None? OK. A renewed signer certificate for Jenkins. I propose to move it to delay it of one week until the first them, because since we will physically meet with Olivier, is it okay, Mark, uh, if we delay the work that you and I had to do? I will ask him and interview him about uh, the world certificate signing and the constraints that will report back on the issues so we can act. The end is uh, March, so that let us February to act on this one. That sounds very, very good, certainly. He, I'm sure he has forgotten more than I know about that topic. So yes, that's great. Let's ask Olivier directly. Uh, any question? Nope, okay. So had playwright tool in our agent image. So thanks Stefan for the job you did here. Uh, can you remind me what were the next step? I, I was uh, trying to find out by myself because before you ask the question, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Um, so Gavin did everything on the Docker builder, so it's okay. You opened the pull request adding Node.js and that is testing the, that NPX Playwright is able to be installed without requiring sudo, which was the initial issue. And as far as I can tell, I released a version of Packer image that has the playwright stuff. So we need to deploy that version. It's deployed on Kubernetes, but not on CI Jenkins IO, so almost done. Almost, yes. Well, we'll do it once it will be merged. Um, by the way, uh, expect in the upcoming week an update on the free GDK available because GDK 8, 17, and 11 has been updated. Pull requests are already opened. We have a minor testing thing to fix, but that will mean a new release of the Packer image, uh, 056.0 with the updated GDK. Okay, so almost done. Thanks, uh, Stefan. You're welcome. To CI Jenkins IO, and then done. Um, issue source index HTML, uh, back to backlog. I didn't have time to focus on this one. Request from Gavin about, uh, there is one index HTML on the uh, Azure bucket file, if we could source it, so we could update it easily. Um, that require put adding a new workflow process or pipeline that will deploy it to Azure in Infra CI. It's not complicated, but require a bit of time that we don't have right now. Um, Terraform module AWS CKS, I keep it on current. Uh, we need to check for duplicated cluster. We might have uh, resources to remove to not pay too much on AWS. That need to be done in pair because if I do it alone, I will mess things up for sure. <laughs> and better to work as a team more seriously. Valid SSL certificate for trusted CI. So pair for Puppet opened. Uh, we were waiting for today's advisory and then we will test the deployment on trusted. Uh, be aware that will have an impact on all the virtual machine using Let's Encrypt because we changed the Let's Encrypt profile uh, that we used. It will be able to support DNS in the future and DNS a challenge instead of HTTP, which will be uh, Nice for the private machines such as Trusted, that will be the first one. Uh, so one, when we will deploy this pull request, please don't merge it because we will have to first disable Puppet Agent everywhere and then enable it 
machine by machine. So first testing on trusted CI, then on other machines to see the impact. The main impact on existing configuration is third bot will be upgraded from 0.23 to 1.27. No breaking change if you are using HTTP challenge, which is the case everywhere. Trusty did the first one to use DNS challenge, the puppet setup, but we never know I might have messed things up despite the testing. So that's why doing one machine at one machine will avoid propagate mayhem. But be aware, don't merge that pair, please. Realign repo Jenkins CI mission, last item is the most prior. So as we said, right now, Hervé focus on SCP Azure. Requires public gates. And Damien Stefan works on ACP DO AWS re enabling. Um, Mark, can I ask you for help? Will you be able to help me writing back um, an initial message to start the conversation with the community, with developers about enabling authentication on mirrors? Yes. Yeah. I'll let me, let me, we've got that doc that I've got that Google doc that you and I had started. Let me start there. Let's put it there. It's a good place for me to think about detailing mm -hmm. out all sorts of things because we've got to give an announcement and we've, we've got our goal that by mid February, we do our first brownout by mid March, a second brownout and go live by end of March. So yeah, I'll, I'll happy to take that action. You bet. Okay, so on my side, um, I'm enabling again. So searching again, um, solution for the HALDAP, LDAP. And share with the team. And then I don't know who will try or implement or I can endeavor, we can pair. But right now, if it's okay, I prefer uh, working with Stefan on the ACP for these two. And then, then I can delegate task to Stefan and I will do the initial work for HA. Unless someone wants to dig with this one, I don't mind. That's only a proposal just so that we divide work. I like that. LDAP is, is a, a really dangerous spot to go wandering in. Yep. <laughs> HA in Kubernetes, that's the, that's the critical area. Um, okay. Do we have new issues? So let me add new issues to add for upcoming milestone. First one, uh, getting credential for plugin ill scoring database. Um, we need uh, to help Adrien with the VPN access uh, he could theoretically access the database by IP, except we need to add the correct uh, VPN routing in his configuration. That's the element that Stefan proposed to show to Mark about the new, the new VPN. That will be the same technical element, but on the former VPN, we will, not, we will need to add routing, routing rules on Adrien client side or everyone's client side. That could be interesting. Um, Second, we will need to provide to Adrien a read-only user on the database. Uh, let's, uh, I told him that it will be difficult until end of week, but I propose to add that one on the upcoming milestone because that should unblock him on plugin ill score unless we are missing time. Is that okay? So it's not top priority, but just below. No objection? Um, Basil opened an issue. I wasn't able to look at it, but we need to look at it on the upcoming because it's blocking him as a, as a user of the platform to release a new Jenkins test harness HTML unit. I'm not sure what this project is or how it's working. Uh, first glance, it looks like here the automatic credential in the CD process wasn't up to date when it tried. Um, Look at the uh, similar issue. Uh, 
uh, twice uh, for uh, the two of them uh, team uh, reserve them by fixing the token or uh, the second one is another fix but yeah okay I, okay so in in both cases, it was a repository permission updater. That's a job that runs every three hours that um, that updates uh, because the credentials are only valid for four hours. So the RPU uh, runs every three hours. So maybe there has been a discrepancy on the, the amount of... So good catch, Hervé. So it's okay if we had that one on the upcoming milestone because we should unblock it, Basil. Maybe it will be nothing. Worst case, we can ask uh, Tim and Daniel to help us. But the similarity is a good thing because it will help us uh, to know where to look. Especially since Basil is uh, really methodic in naming his issue. Mm -hmm. Yep, which is a really, really good help for the similarity system. Uh, we had an issue from one of our users um, that has been closed and reopened. So that user uses a tool that checks the metadata of our RPM repo, and that RPM system lists a bunch of uh, version of Jenkins. In that case, they are mirroring everything. That's the behavior. And some of the old version are not mirrored anymore. However, we should have at least the archive mirror reference on the mirror. So I'm not sure what and how it fails, but as Tim mentioned, if we have this metadata that mention the URL, the get Jenkins IO should redirect us to the fallback, which is not the case. Uh, my first guess is that we might have a synchronization uh, script that only copy something uh, that is not older than a certain amount of months. And then you have a sliding window of uh, files copied to the mirror reference. Um, I guess for the RPM, we should have always all the RPM uh, in that case, uh, because and same for Debian's and old packages, they should always be available. So I'm not sure why it's failing, got a check. Um, it's not top priority though, because it's an old version and it's really specific, but yeah, I wanted to mention that uh, we had that activity. So is it is it really worth putting the burden on our mirror providers to keep all of the old RPMs and all of the old DEBs because each of them is ranges 90 megabytes and hundreds of those things that's that's some some storage. Yeah, I agree with you. It's not. However, archive Jenkins IO should be is our uh, area that a machine that we manage and it should, it's, a, it's a mirror. So it should be the default fallback. Ah, I see what the you're mirror saying. System, the reference mirror system is not OSUSL. It's uh, inside gate Jenkins IO. In the Kubernetes cluster, there is an Azure bucket with all the files, like a one terabyte bucket. So that bucket should not be clean from all the RPM or DEB packages. Right. So the hash of the file is still on the mirror database, but the only mirror serving that one will be archive Jenkins IO because it has the files. Thank you. So that's why that issue, and that's the reason why Tim reopened it because that's that's an issue, but that's an edge case issue because we don't have a lot of users doing that. So I told the user mid February, so we should not forget about this one. But I propose not to work on this one because we have much, uh, much pressing topics. Great, thank you. Thanks for the clarity. No problem. Uh, valid SSL certificates, that one doesn't need triage. We don't have to work on it as far as I can tell. We need to finish trusted and see if it's okay. And then we will work on certificates on uh, the uh, AWS clusters. If we are quick to do that, then I will delegate to Stefan that task. You are you are designated volunteer, but that one will be a bit of Terraform, a bit of Let's Encrypt, and a bit of Puppet. But that should be easy if it works uh, flawlessly with Trusted. So it should it's, be. Should be. 
And then I don't see other new issues. Do you have, folks, other new issues or topics you will want to add to the upcoming milestone? No? OK, any question or topic you want to clarify or discuss about? No, OK, so we are going to get the, to call this close. Uh, HTML unit by Basil. Is that Crow his name? What's the name of Basil? Yes. R -O -W. That okay. is correct. C -R -C -H -R -O -W is correct. Uh, yeah, but it's HTML unit, not HTML unit. Yep. Good. Seems that ci.jenkins.io is back. Oh, nice. Thanks, you are the bearer of the news, of the good news. So, Stefan, some work <laughs> for you. You will have plugin updates. Uh, oh, that's one thing. Just a note. So we have to ask Alex Brandes to buy us a beer or a coffee because he broke the Jenkins version. So it, it, that was his, that was the mistake, in fact. Okay. Yes. So we oh, had yeah, an issue. Yeah. I got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. That, so that, we... I pointed it. That, I pointed that line, the exact line, the one hundred and fourteen. Absolutely. I pointed it out. So. So we had a campaign of changing a GitHub action depreciation, where if you add uh, that string printed on the std out of a custom action, same thing as a shared library. Uh, that thing was deprecated in favor of you write the key equals values inside the file, which is present on the path provided by the environment variable GitHub output. That's what GitHub tells us okay. to do. But in the case of that GitHub action, the Golang command line, in if it's running in GitHub action, printed that string. And as Stefan underlined, we see that screen, it's valid. Let me open directly. So you see Jenkins weekly version, you see the screen is valid and we had the correct one. Yeah, but, but it's that not doing screen, it, that just- Exactly, printing. it's printed, it's not executed. So the file GitHub pointed by the variable GitHub output is empty, meaning then, as you can see, you have a missing output here because the file is empty. So the reference value the one because if empty. not, you cannot you cannot understand it's missing the variable. Oh, it's not. Sorry, I thought no problem. But uh, the suffix variable should be Jenkins version dash GDK eleven, and we don't. That one was blocking us off on updating the core Jenkins on both images. So uh, Stefan, yesterday in order to test InfraCI or two days ago or Friday, I don't remember, but he changed manually, created the new uh, image manually, not with the automatic process. And we will have to do the same unless we can test that new Gen GV uh, thing. So thanks Stefan for pointing that. Thank Gareth Evans for uh, also confirming the issue. We should be able uh, to fix that. And by the way, if we use update CLI, we won't have that issue at all. I, I, I started the dead CLI, but it's, it's, it's not okay. No problem, but we still have to fix Jenkins version. Okay, that's all for me. Great. So I'm stopping the recording. So for people watching this video, see you next week. Bye.